You are listening and watching to a very special podcast. <clears throat> okay then. <clears throat> I can see things are about to get a little more intense now, aren't they? Oh yes. Prepare for the destruction. No, seriously, there is going to be a destruction. It's coming. It's coming. Here we go. It was all a big blur, but Barrera could see a memory. It was definitely Ophelia as a young girl. How her life used to start. How she was very isolated from the world. But when she was taught by her mother, her mother was nothing more than just a extreme religious lady who believed everything in the world was sin and how everything was corrupted. Ophelia wanted to believe there was still good out there. She managed to meet one of her neighbors who was sunbathing. Ophelia interrupted, but the neighbor girl didn't really mind. She actually liked Ophelia very much. When Ophelia asked about the girl who was a bit trying to cover herself because she was topless, the girl explained that she was just developing into a young lady. Young Ophelia wanted to be like that too. However, the neighbor girl said, well, you're going to have to wait until you get a little older. And when you do, you're going to look very beautiful. However, young Ophelia shook her head. I don't think so. My mom told me that if I get older, I'll be corrupted. <laughs> She's trying to put that shit into your head? Are you serious? <laughs> I'm sorry, kid. I know I shouldn't use language. I know she's going to yell at me. And my mom would be mad if I cursed in front of a kid. But <sighs> listen, don't listen to what your mom says. She really needs to open up. And I bet she's got a chest like this before, right? I know, but she says that people with chests like those are just trying to be sinful. Well, we're not trying to be, and we're not trying to lead people on. It's just how we are, aren't we? Yeah. However, her mother found out and scolded at the neighbor girl and yelled at Ophelia. Ophelia began to cry. She was trying to protest to her mother that she was just curious, but her mother slapped her saying, no, that girl is trying to corrupt you with sin. However, the neighbor girl shouted back, hey, you don't hit your own child like that. She was just curious. She wasn't trying to do anything. And I wasn't trying to lead her on. Why don't you just leave her alone? Don't tell me what to do, you little hussy. The neighbor lady's mother came out. Hey, I thought I told you not to say things towards my daughter. Why don't you suck it, bitch? Hey, sweetheart, you don't need to say that. Well, you know what? I'm sick and tired of her calling me and referring to me as a hussy. Or better yet, a hooker. I am no hooker. I work at a successful job. And I'm going to graduate from high school. So, if you think that's what I'm going to do for the rest of my life, then you got another thing coming. <sighs> However, young Ophelia's powers begin to surface. As there was much destruction, Ophelia could not stop her tears. Her mother was terrified, ran over to her daughter and picked her up, trying to tell her, I'm sorry, sweetie. Sweetie, please. The great savior, he has mercy on you. He loves you. But Ophelia did not stop crying. So the mother went inside. The neighbor lady and, and her daughter watched in horror at what was going on. In the next memory, 
Ophelia had grown up into a teenager, but she was mercilessly being bullied by everyone. Even the teachers did nothing to help. Some didn't want to intervene, but others just wanted to see her suffer. Ophelia never felt more alone, and she wanted only just companionship. That's all she ever wanted. But because of her mother and her so-called fundamental reputation, it was just too much. Poor Ophelia. Her hair was untidy as usual, although she brushes it a lot. Her face was a bit, well, it had a little red, but she still had a clear skin, except for a few pimples on the sides of her face. She looked skinny, but she always thought of herself as an overweight girl because she eats a lot and people always calls her a pig, always making those pig noises, oink, oink, oink. She hated that. They also call her a crybaby and a quote-unquote squealer. It wasn't until prom came around. Ophelia met a nice-looking boy by the name of Lartus. Lartus was trying to be nice and invite her to the prom. But Ophelia, fearing that this was some sort of joke, refused. However, Lartus explained that he was just wanting to do this out of a kindness. So Ophelia accepted. She told her mother, but her mother refuses her to go. However, Ophelia managed to convince her mother by using her powers. The mother tried to convince her not to go. Also at the same time, how the mother told her not to use this power. But the more Ophelia managed to confront her mother, the more her powers grew and grew. Ophelia decided to test her powers. She did a little research and tested herself. She discovered that she had a crazy healing factor. She can move objects with her mind. She can see things before they happen. She knew that the kids would bully her. She didn't know how she knew, but she did. She can also read minds too. But sometimes she never really relied on reading minds. She always was so paranoid because if she did read their minds, she would probably think that everyone hated her, which they did. But on that night of prom, Ophelia managed to keep her mother quiet and made sure that she did not proceed to intervene with her happiness. At the prom, Ophelia had a wonderful time. She managed to socialize with some people there who were nice, but there were others, such as the popular group, who were really annoyed with Ophelia for some reason. Like as if she had no business to be here. It wasn't until the announcement was made on the stage of who was king and queen. And then the names were said, Ophelia and Lartus. Lartus smiled at Ophelia. Ophelia's face was frozen with surprise. Then a grin slowly appeared on her face as she heard applause. She then thought to herself, I am loved. I'm loved. I'm loved. <laughs> she went up to the stage, but that was the biggest mistake of her life. Because the next minute she stepped on there, something sprayed all over her and Lartis. And everyone left.
Ophelia realized she was once again the joke of it all. And all of a sudden, she snapped, and monsters came from different portals, locking everyone in, and all of a sudden, tear them all apart. Ophelia used her powers against people who tried to escape and managed to kill them in the process. She had just about enough of all this. She was sick of being teased. She was sick of being bullied. She was sick of it all. And now they were going to pay with their lives. Ophelia smiled at the destruction and she left, but not before glancing over at Lartis, who was nowhere in sight, and she thinks that he was dead, and she fled from there. But while she was trying to get back, the bullies tried to come at her with a vengeance, but Ophelia managed to kill them. Ophelia managed to reunite with Lartis, who was found scared, but Ophelia comforted him. She comforted him so much that she began to manage to use something. She used her powers to restrain him until she got him right where she wanted him to be. You're all mine, Lartis. I know you weren't the one that would never hurt me, right? She said. No, Ophelia, please, please, no, no, Ophelia! Want to see more? It'll continue soon. Stay tuned. It's getting good. See you next time.